in this module we shall discuss about the cardinal utility theory demand of a good refers to the quantity which the consumers can buy at different prices and at different levels of money income here it is important to differentiate between the desires or wants of a commodity with the ability to buy it the desire of a person to buy is something which he wants to buy but whether he can buy it or not depends on the money income which he has hence demand is not a want or desire to buy something it is the ability of a person to buy different things at different prices given his money income demand depends on various factors like the price of the good the price of the other related good income of the consumer taste and preferences of the consumer government policies etc but the main problem for a consumer is to determine how much quantity of each good to buy and at what prices in their current income the answer for this lies in the theory of consumer behavior according to the theory of consumer behavior or demand a consumer always consumes and demands that much quantity of a good which maximizes his utility here by utility we mean the satisfaction derived from the commodity which is even there before consuming that commodity but it can only be felt after consuming the commodity in fact utility is the only thing which induces a person to consume a good hence the level of satisfaction comes only after consuming the good but the next question is how to measure the utility for this there are two schools of thoughts one was given by the neo classical economist as the cardinal utility theory and the other was given by the modern economist as the ordinal utility theory after studying this module you shall be able to know the concept of consumer behavior and utility learn how to measure the cardinal utility identify the level of consumer's consumption which provides him maximum utility evaluate the equilibrium quantity consumed by a consumer for each good which maximizes his total utility given his income and price of other goods analyze how the cardinal utility changes due to the change in the consumption pattern and derive the demand curve of the consumer from his marginal utility curve we shall now learn about the cardinal utility theory cardinal utility approach was originally given by marshall according to him utility can be measured in utils where utils is a scale like 1 2 3 and so on where one can measure his level of satisfaction or utility utils was originally derived by walrus whereas ordinal utility approach was given by hicks where the utility cannot be measured in the cardinal approach rather it could be measured in terms of ranks or orders for instance the highest satisfaction or utility level would be given the highest rank and the lesser satisfaction or utility could be given a lesser rank in terms of measurement of utility and so on theory of consumer behavior attempts to seek the consumption of goods which maximizes consumer's utility it also helps a consumer in his decision making about how to allocate his consumption expenditure on different goods so that his total utility could be maximized but before moving ahead in the theory of consumer behavior based on the cardinal approach it is important to know the assumption of this approach next let us have a look at the assumptions of the cardinal approach rationality a consumer is always rational that is he always prefers more of goods and services to derive maximum utility thus he always buys the commodity which gives him the maximum level of utility 
first and then he buys the least utility giving commodity at the end. Finite money income. The consumers have limited money income which they spend on the purchase of all the goods and services for their living. Thus, they allocate this income as their consumption expenditure on all goods and services. Next is cardinal utility. The utility derived from the consumption of each good is measurable in terms of utils which is in turn equals to the money a consumer is willing to pay for it. That is, one util is equals to utility of one unit of money. The next assumption is constant marginal utility of money. The utility of each unit of money spent on buying the goods remains the same, that is 1. Next is diminishing marginal utility. Now according to this assumption, utility derived from consumption of each successive unit of the good diminishes. As we consume more of a good, the utility derived from each successive unit of it decreases although the total utility from the consumption of the total quantity of good increases. This is also known as the Gossens first law. Note that here each successive unit of the good is homogeneous in nature. The next assumption is additive utility. According to this, the utility derived from the consumption of all goods and services is additive in nature. Therefore, the utility function of a basket N comprising of various goods and services is represented as follows. Capital U is equals to F bracket X1 comma X2 comma X3 comma and so on till Xn bracket close. Here x1, x2, x3 till xn are the quantity of different goods and services consumed by the consumer with his limited money income. Now based on this the total utility function of n items is additive and can be written as Tu is equals to u1x1 plus u2x2 plus u3x3 plus so on till un x n. Moving on to the concept of total utility and marginal utility. Total utility refers to the sum of the utility derived from the consumption of each unit of a good. Since as per the cardinal approach, utility can be measured, hence total utility can also be measured in utils and in monetary terms. Algebraically, Tu is equals to U1 plus U2 plus U3 plus and so on till Un is equals to Un. Marginal utility is defined as the utility derived from the last unit consumed. It is also defined as the utility derived from the consumption of each successive unit of the same good. More precisely, marginal utility is the change in the total utility due to an additional unit consumed. Algebraically, MU is equals to change in TU divided by change in Q or MU is equals to TUN minus TUN minus 1, where TUN is the total utility derived from the consumption of N units of a good and TUN minus 1 is the total utility derived from the consumption of N minus 1 unit of the same good. Now this can be understood with the help of table and diagram. Initially, the total utility increases as we consume a good, but as we consume more of a good, it increases but at a diminishing rate. As in, we can see from the table and from the figure that initially the total utility increases to 40 and then to 70, then to 90, and then 200 but the marginal utility first increases by 40 and then by 30 and then by 20 and then by just 10. However, when the total utility reaches to its maximum that is 100 then it started falling as the consumer increases his consumption. Correspondingly, the marginal utility becomes zero and then negative. 
Note that the point where the total utility reaches its maximum is the point where the marginal utility becomes zero and thereafter when the consumer increases his consumption of the goods again then total utility decreases and marginal utility goes negative. Thus we can conclude that there exists the following relationship between the total utility and marginal utility. Total utility increases initially at an increasing rate first and marginal utility also increases. Thereafter, total utility increases at a diminishing rate and marginal utility start diminishing. When total utility reaches to its maximum, marginal utility becomes zero. When more of the unit of the good is consumed, even after achieving the highest level of total utility, then the total utility start decreasing and correspondingly the marginal utility becomes negative. Next, we shall discuss the consumer equilibrium under the cardinal approach. After talking about the assumptions and the total utility and the marginal utility concept, we can now evaluate the consumer equilibrium according to the cardinal approach. As a general rule, a consumer is always in equilibrium at a point where he maximizes his total utility. Now this can be explained with the help of the following two cases. Case 1. Consumer equilibrium under single commodity case. Suppose that the consumer is having his money income and can consume only one commodity that is X. Now in this case he has only two choices either spend his money income on the commodity or can retain his money income with himself where both of his money income and the commodity X has a certain utility for him. Now if he retains all of his income and purchase no commodity then the marginal utility of money would be lower than the marginal utility of the commodity because MUM is equal to 1 as per the assumption. Thus the consumer can increase his total utility by exchanging his money income with the consumption of the commodity as the marginal utility of the commodity is greater as far as MUX is greater than MUM. Moreover, as it has been stated in the assumption above that X has a diminishing marginal utility and money has a constant marginal utility, Therefore, the utility maximizing consumer will always exchange his money income for commodity X as long as MUX is greater than MUM and will reach to his equilibrium level of consumption when MUX is equal to MUM. However, the prices of the commodities are generally greater than rupees 1. Therefore, in this case, the consumer equilibrium can be expressed as MUX is equals to PX into MUM where MUM is equals to 1. Hence, consumer equilibrium in case of a single commodity occurs at a point where the consumer's MUX is equals to PX. If MUX is greater than PX, then the consumer can increase welfare by purchasing more of commodity X. If MUX is less than PX, then the consumer can increase his total satisfaction by cutting down his purchase of commodity X. And if MUX is equals to PX, then the consumer will be in equilibrium. Case 2. Consumer equilibrium under the multiple commodity case. In a real world, the consumer just does not spend on purchasing only one commodity. In order to make his living and fulfill his demand, a consumer always demands many commodities. We have earlier seen how he determines his equilibrium level of consumption when he just demands only one commodity. Let's now check out how the equilibrium of a utility maximizing consumer determined when he purchases several commodities. As we know that different commodities are different so the utility derived by them would also be different. 
Some commodities would give the consumer the highest level of satisfaction or maximum utility, whereas some would give him second highest or even lesser utility. In such a condition, the consumer keeps on switching his allocation of money income on different commodities as per their marginal utility. He keeps on switching his consumption expenditure from one commodity to other till the marginal utility of all the commodities becomes equals to each other. This is also known as the concept of equi-marginal utility. Let us now explain the law of equi-marginal utility with the help of two commodities case. Now, in such a situation, suppose the consumer consumes only two commodities, X and Y. By spending his finite income, the price of commodity X is given as Px and the price for commodity Y is given by Py. Now, if we just apply the same concept which we have applied in case 1, then we can say as per that, Mux is equal to Px into Mum and MUY is equals to PY into MUM. Since MUM is equals to 1, therefore it would become MUX is equals to PX and MUY is equals to PY. Now MUX is equals to PX into MUM or MUX divided by PX MUM is equals to 1. Similarly MUY is equals to PY into MUM or MUY divided by PY into MUM is equals to 1. Therefore, from the above two equations, we get that MUX divided by PX into MUM is equals to MUY divided by PY into MUM is equals to 1. Or MUX divided by MUY is equals to PX MUM divided by PY MUM. Or MUX divided by MUY is equals to PX divided by PY or MUX divided by PX is equals to MUY divided by PY. Thus, according to the above discussion, a utility maximizing consumer is in equilibrium under two commodities case at the consumption level where his MUX divided by MUY is equals to the price of x divided by the price of y or the marginal utility of x divided by the price of x is equals to the marginal utility of y divided by the price of y that is mux by px is equals to muy by py. Hence, accordingly, a consumer consuming multiple commodities in his given money income would maximize his utility at a point that is MUX by PX is equals to MUY by PY is equals to MUZ by PZ is equals to till MUN by PN. In other words, a utility maximizing consumer would be in equilibrium where the MU derived from each commodity is equals to each other that is where he equalizes the marginal utility of each unit of his money expenditure on various goods and services. Next, we shall learn the derivation of demand curve. The main purpose of studying the theory of consumer behavior is to derive the demand curve of the consumers. In order to derive the demand curve by the cardinal approach, we have to consider the single commodity case where the consumer reaches to his equilibrium at the point where MUX is equals to PX. Let us understand it graphically. The left hand panel shows the equilibrium of the consumer under cardinal approach. It shows that if the price of the commodity changes, then the equilibrium quantity where the consumer maximizes his utility, that is MUX is equals to PX, also changes. Suppose that the consumer is in equilibrium at point E0 where given the price of X at P0, MUX is equals to P0. Here the equilibrium quantity is OQ0. Now if the price of the commodity falls to P1, then the equilibrium condition will be disturbed making MUX is greater than P0. Since MUM is constant, the only way to attain the equilibrium again is to reduce MUX. This can be done only by buying more of commodity X. 
Thus, by consuming Q0 Q1 additional unit of x, he reduces his mux to E1 Q1 and thereby he restores the equilibrium condition that is mux is equals to P1. Similarly, if the price falls further, he buys and consumes more to maximize his satisfaction. As we can see from the right panel that as the price of the commodity falls from P0 to P3, the equilibrium quantity where the consumer maximizes his utility increases as each price line intersects with the MUX curve at different equilibrium points which in turn gives the corresponding increasing equilibrium quantities. However, when we stretch the equilibrium points derived at the left panel to the right, then we can see from the right panel that as the price is decreasing, the quantity of the commodity consumed is increasing, which is depicting the law of demand. Hence, joining all the equilibrium points, we get the demand curve at the right panel, which is downward sloping, that is showing a negative relationship between the price and the quantity of the commodity. Further, we will discuss the drawbacks of the cardinal approach. Although cardinal utility approach analyzes the consumer behavior in a very simple and easy way, but still the economists have drawn some of the drawbacks of this approach. Following are some of those drawbacks of the cardinal utility theory which were pointed out by the economist. First, the assumption of cardinal utility approach that utility is measurable in utils and in monetary terms is very dissatisfying. Utility is a subjective concept which cannot be measured quantifiably. It can always be measured by giving preferences for each level of utility. Secondly, cardinal utility approach assumes that marginal utility of money remains constant and it also serves as a measure of utility. This assumption is also unrealistic because the marginal utility of money can also change like all other goods. Thus, it cannot serve as a measure of utility derived from goods and services. Thirdly, the psychological law of diminishing marginal utility has been established from introspection. This law is accepted as an axiom or proverb without any practical confirmation. Fourthly, the cardinal utility approach and the derivation of demand curve on the basis of this approach are based on the Cetris Paribus assumption which is unrealistic. It is for this reason that this theory ignores the substitution and the income effect which might operate simultaneously. Finally, cardinal approach considers that the effect of price changes on demand curve is exclusively price effect. This assumption is also unrealistic because price effect may include income and substitution effect also. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. This chapter not only outlines some important concepts like that of total utility and marginal utility, but also explains how utility can be measured in terms of utils. We have seen in this module that the change in price level changes the level of utility derived from commodities as a consumer is a rational consumer who gives first preference to the commodity which gives him the highest level of utility and gives the last preference to the commodity which gives him the least level of satisfaction. Moreover, the theory of consumer behavior under the cardinal approach has shown us the way in which consumer equilibrium could be attained algebraically and graphically both. At the end, we have also derived the demand curve with the consumer equilibrium points and thus in this way, the theory of consumer behavior has helped in deriving the demand curve of a consumer in the most simple way. The way we take assumptions before drawing any model in a similar way, each model is also associated with some drawbacks. The cardinal approach is also affected with some of the drawbacks which we have explained in detail above. Hence, 
These drawbacks give a chance to the economist for more research and development in this area.